Okay, so thank you ever so much for joining me, Melanie. So um, it's great to have you here. You're doing some amazing stuff right now. And what I'd really love is for you to just take a couple of minutes right now to tell everybody kind of what you're doing in your career right now and where you are. Okay, hi, um, I'm Melanie Coleman and I am a business coach um, and I work primarily with women who are corporate but who find in that corporate um, is maybe not the place that they want to be anymore. I help them to they would like to start and then to um, help them to build it up uh, and get to the point where they transition out of corporate altogether and are able to focus fully on their business. That's really good. So, And I expect there's quite a lot of people like that more than we realise. I think, you know, especially at the moment, there's a huge amount of people who are kind of getting those light bulb moments and realising that actually they don't have to stay stuck where they are. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you didn't kind of grow up wanting to be, as a little girl, wanting to be a business coach, um, much like myself, I suppose, those kind of roles didn't really, they weren't really existing when we were younger. Um, so, what's, what's been your career journey? What got you here? Because you've had some really interesting kind of roles, haven't you? Uh, um growing up I didn't have the kind of dreams that some people have of becoming um, you know a, a particular thing you know I didn't dream of becoming a doctor or a lawyer or anything like that I really didn't know what I wanted and really um, sort of ticked any boxes for me so I am um, I did my GCSEs, I didn't particularly fancy doing A-levels, so instead I chose to go and do a BTEC National Diploma um, because I felt it um, you know, to me, so I did mine in business and finance, um, something that you couldn't do at A-level at that time. Um, and from there I made the decision not to go to university either. Um, and instead, I joined the corporate world for the first time as a commercial apprentice um, and spent the first year going around lots of different departments. So I you know, was there something there that I really enjoyed doing, in which case then I could sort of move on and, and start working in that area. Um, I have to be honest, after the first year, Still nothing really lit me up, um, but I ended I was in for a couple of years. Um, but I experienced my sort of first uh, um, bout of, I wouldn't say it was bullying in that particular case, but sort of um, being under pressure like me. Um, and so I decided that the job wasn't really for me and started looking around. Um, and that's when I um, discovered that the Foreign Commonwealth Office were recruiting. Um, uh, that obviously everybody knows that they're in London, but um, they also have um, a big site outside of Milton Keynes. And I live not far from Milton Keynes, so that was perfect for me. Um, and so I, I applied and it took quite a long time because they were going through changes uh, at that point in time, but I got a job there. Um, and so um, I moved there and spent almost 20 years working for them um, in various guises. Um, so I spent my the initial part of my career um, at Milton. Keynes. I then went on promotion down to London um, and got a taste of what it was like to commute, um, which was fine when I was in my 20s, maybe not so much as I got older, but um, I only spent at that point um, about 18 months commuting before I um, made a big 
decision um, to apply for an overseas posting um, and ended up getting it and going to South Africa for four years, at which point um, I transferred from um, being a home-based civil servant to um, being in the diplomatic service. Um, and then after my four years, I came back to the UK and made the decision, rather than going back to London, to come back to Milton Keynes. Um, and it was where, in the Foreign Office, they were starting to restructure the service departments into a trading fund. So it was quite a long-winded process that went through sort of several stages. But effectively, what they were doing was turning it into a commercial entity and making it more viable um, for the government as a whole. So by turning it into a trading fund, it meant that they could actually become like a one-stop shop for um, all government departments rather than just the foreign office for the services that they provided. So I was quite lucky actually that I was in the right place at the right time um, and that I happened to come back at this particular point and, and um, I initially came back into a project management role but then um, they were advertising for roles in the corporate area and applied it as a promotion but it all were, also was really interesting to me um, and that's really where I found my thing you know where I found what lights me up and started to understand what my strengths were uh, which were sort of spotting opportunities that other people didn't necessarily see and so I sort of started to um, point things and the line manager I had at that particular time was um, very supportive very encouraging track whereby I was encouraged to sort of keep building on the things that I was good at um, and was able to go through sort of different um, all in the same field but to sort of start climbing the ladder and start broadening my range of skills and become more and more strategic um, so yeah I think I think part of it was being in the right place at the right time, but it's also about spotting opportunities and not being scared to actually, um, you know, act on them and share them um, because you never know what, what can happen. Definitely. I think we, we kind of get very stuck, don't we? We start doing a job and we enjoy it. And so you're frightened of upsetting any apple carts or what if I change and then I don't like it and I've left a job I really enjoy but actually sometimes grabbing those opportunities they they come at a time often we don't realize that it's really important and then a little bit later you you kind of think ah that's that's why I changed that or I'm so glad now that I did that because otherwise I would have been stuck where I was I mean when you went abroad you did some amazing things. I mean, the you know the photo that we we used in our trailer was the, the, the hippos and things. You know, they're not the kind of things you kind of probably would have thought you'd have wanted to do in a job, or even could be part of your job. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't know when I joined the Foreign Commonwealth Office as a home based civil servant that I was going to go off and have that kind of point I uh, they, they didn't allow homes home based civil servants to go on transfer into the diplomatic service and at that particular point um, overseas um, sort of rulings around being a diplomat didn't really appeal to me because at that point they could tell you where to go they told you where your next posting was you didn't get choice um, and, and and I like choices <laughs> so um, you know at that point it didn't appeal but you know I think sometimes you create your opportunities 
um, you know, and it's a, it's a case of looking out for them. And when they did change the rules, um, you know, I was wanting to actually jump on that you know, apply for the posting that I wanted um, because I had home and made a little go in the world and South Africa was top of my list. Yeah, very lucky. Um, yeah, there was within days of me making this list, there was a job in South Africa, particularly a role that excited me it was an opportunity to go to somewhere that did um, and so I just went for it without thinking about it um, because I think sometimes you can you know dwell on things too long to make a decision to then talk yourself back out of it again yeah definitely I think there's there's a, a big kind of uh, opportunity is probably the, the wrong word actually but if we're given an opportunity to go for and we think too deeply into it or we reflect too much on it and we pros and cons it for too long you can actually start to create barriers that that aren't there and I you know okay it's not the sort of thing you would have just kind of gone in at nine o'clock in the morning and at 10 o'clock come away going right I'm off to South Africa in three weeks but you know you'd started to think about you know, is this something you'd like to do? You've made the list of all the places you'd like to go to. And then when that job came up and one of those places that you were pretty much the first on your list was listed, it's almost kind of a, a, a you know, it's, it'd be stupid not to go for it at that point. You know, the alarm bells are ringing and the lights are flashing to, to sort of tell you that this is your moment and this opportunity is made for you. I think, you know, we often, we go away and we talk to friends and we talk to family and... Yeah, I think... I, I, a lot of the time, especially with Harry, so it's one thing to, um, you know, write down on a piece of here, but when all of a sudden that opportunity becomes available, I think that's where a lot of people fall down because they allow their fear to take over so then they start questioning do i really want to go is this the right um you know and and then to take over um and by sort of saying to you you know i've been waiting for and acting straight away you take away that, you know, and I still sort of feel, oh, you know, you know, it's a bit, it was scary. It was scary. And, and especially when I was sitting there thinking, oh my God, I've got to do all this stuff that I've got to do. And I'm going off to a country all on my own. I don't, you know, but it's exciting as well and I wouldn't have done it if it didn't excite me yeah and um so yeah I think it's a thing that stops most people is not taking that first step yeah and I think one of the things that's really great with your story in particular is you didn't have this straight out of school this wasn't something where you went to college and you kind of knew what you wanted to do you for a very long time didn't really know what kind of career you wanted didn't really know what lit you up as you said and you know there were it's probably you know a good half of the students in most year groups at the moment are kind of going I don't know what I want to do you know they've got a rough idea they want to work in an office or they they want to do something with their hands or you know they'll, they'll have rough ideas but not enough to be able to narrow it down to any kind of niche even down to the type of companies or start thinking about the kind of if they want to work in this country or a different country you know they just don't know and it's very difficult for them because all your subject choices are around what you want to do when you leave school all your career paths are worked out around the type of careers you want to do and sometimes the best jobs kind of fall at us don't they when we're in a different job and then another yeah. job comes up and you think oh that looks quite interesting or you get friendly with somebody who works in a different department and they're telling you about the job and you think 
I could do that. You know, that's where some of those moments come from. And I think that's, mm. that gets missed in some of the youth. I think they, they don't get to see those moments. And I think your story is really great for being able to say, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And yet I've had this fantastic career path where I've done some really great jobs and I've had some really amazing opportunities. And yet I've still kind of come out and I'm now self-employed doing it for myself because again, those changes came at me much later on. And now I'm in a position where I'm like, actually, I really love what I'm doing right now, which is really great. So um, if you could leave us with one kind of story that would, uh, would help those that are watching it to kind of realize that, you know, work is, is real life and, you know, we'd love it all to be all very professional. We'd love it to all be, you know, you come out of school and you have an interview and you get the job and, you know, and it's a perfect salary and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't always work like that. So what, what story do you have for us? So, um, you know, at the beginning of the talk, I mentioned my very first job and I said about it was the first, you know, bad experience that I had. Um, and I had others throughout my career. Um, you know, I've experienced bullying at various stages throughout my career um, and it comes under different guises, really. So... When I was in my first management job, I had um, a guy working for me who was very aggressive and he was an, what I would call an aggressive bully. But towards the end of my foreign office career, I um, experienced a different type of bullying and it's ultimately what led me to leave um, the office. Although I had already in the back of my mind sort of was thinking, you know, I was prepared, get building up the skills and experience to be able to take elsewhere because things were changing anyway. But the experience I had was with a manipulative bully. So, you know, it wasn't the, um, sorry, my series gone off. <laughs> um, it wasn't, um, you know, your classic signs of bullying where you know somebody's in your face and really aggressive there are other ways as well and in this particular case I um, ended up with a manager who didn't really understand you know where, where I was taking my area of the business um, and I think he was a bit uncomfortable in his own role and so he seemed to see me as a threat even though wasn't um, and so what he would do would be put barriers in my way um, you know that I to try and stop me from um, getting my ideas out there um, so he would do everything he could to just try to think of the right way to put it and diplomacy coming in here um, it was um, yeah he was he was trying to keep me small basically but he was doing it in very subtle ways sort of putting obstacles in my way um excluding me from things um at one point he um put another manager in between us to distance himself from me and made uh, and sort of as if it was like you know someone else's problem um and yeah there were lots of things he he would um talk to my staff behind my back and have like little meetings where he could encourage them to like come to him with issues rather than them coming to me and dealing with you know working through them um and that left me feeling really really isolated um and then to a head and i actually ended up because i've been trying to cope with it on my own for such a long time I ended up having a breakdown right? Um, and it was during that time that I made the decision to take voluntary severance um, and that was when I made the decision to start my own business for the first time um, and that, that you know for various reasons that didn't work out and I did go back into corporate briefly 
um, and ended up um, in a in a situation with someone who was quite aggressive and that just triggered lots of things in me and caused stress related illness which then led me to leave in that company as well and it was at that point that I started my coaching business so what I would say to people is that you know bad things can happen um, you know it might be similar to what I've had happen to me but it you know it could be anything um, but that doesn't have to be the end of it you know that's just all it is is closing one particular chapter it's not the end of the story there's still you know for every door that closes new new opportunities open um, so you know that's what I would like people to walk away with yeah I think it's it's a, a bit of a, a scary thought we kind of seem to think that bullies only exist at school don't we and they don't I kind of sometimes talk when I talk to the students no. I work with, and I say you know these bullies at school grow up into adults and unless they're dealt with at school they can often go into work and carry over some of those traits and unless you have a manager who is very strong and is like hang on I don't have bully in, a, in my department they can sometimes get away with it and what I, I think is really great from your story is that you know you've had quite a successful career and you were high up in your position and yet you still had to deal with this and in mm. sometimes you had to deal with it with people below you not just above you and it's about knowing how to spot those yeah. signs knowing how to see if you're just working with somebody who's just a little bit of a a, a, a nasty person or whether actually they're affecting your health and the first time you yeah. didn't spot the signs and it affected your health and unfortunately you had a, a, a bad outcome for that but the second time it started happening you were able to kind of hang on I've spotted these signs I'm not going to allow it to to push me that far again and you were able to then to walk away from it which I think is is really important and it, it shows massive strength to you as well that you were able to do that and still be able to see it as a positive learning experience which is is really amazing yeah and what i've learned since as well which i think um might help people out there is that quite often when you're in that situation you need to realize it's it's not necessarily it's not you there's nothing wrong with you um quite often the bullying stems from something within them um, you know, some kind of insecurity within them, and that doesn't make it right. No. But it, it's nothing to do with you, um, and you have a choice as well. You have a choice. Um, you can either allow them to do it and, and allow the situation to affect you and become a victim, or you can choose to be strong, move on, deal with that particular issue, decide to just leave that issue behind whatever feels most comfortable for you yeah no I think that's that's kind of a, a really lovely way for us to to kind of come to the end of the interview really is just on, on that because I think that's really great advice for for all the, the students that are looking to leave school going to university college apprenticeships or even start their jobs for the first time they can apply that as, as advice all the way through I think so thank you ever so much for your time today and for sharing your story it's been really really lovely chatting to you so thank you ever so much that's okay you're welcome